Well, welcome back. We're talking about the ongoing economic and political crisis in Venezuela. Let's get back to our panel. Let's go to Gloria. Gloria, uh, what is your response to the points that Eric just made, the fact that oil is now three times the price uh, it was when Hugo Chavez was in power? The other point that Eric makes is what happened to the trillions of dollars raised by the price of oil and what of the government's failure to diversify its economy? Well, I greatly dispute that figure of trillions of dollars. And what, what um, Eric considers squandering and the opposition and the rich of Venezuela and the U.S. oil companies consider squandering is spending that money on social projects. Despite the drop in oil prices, uh, the social spending has increased greatly even through these recent years. Uh, one in 1.3 million homes have been built. Uh, for people who, I w I've been there many times, they used to live on the hillside in hovels that would slide down and people would die in, in, in downpours. It's been given free to the people. Health care is now available to people. Health care is and not even, even available like at all. Health care isn't well, even available. Wait a second. Wait, 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 I mean, this you is just propaganda. Yeah. This Eric, is just ludicrous. I'm not what's done, being Eric. Discussed. Eric, you One moment, Eric. spoke without cease. Okay, I go let ahead, you Gloria. Speak. And the issue of you can't blame Venezuela for oil industry that has existed and has been responsible for the vast majority of their income for more than 100 years. This is what um, President Maduro and the government's trying to do now. They're urging people that the country has to rely more on their own production, their own agricultural production, reducing imports. That's a very healthy step that was never done before. And when 80 percent of the population lived in poverty, and a huge percentage of that in abject poverty before Hugo Chavez, you never heard a com word of complaint in the United States. You only knew that the U.S. government backed dictators like um, Andres Perez, who under his command, there was a rebellion of the people in 1989 in which an estimated 3,000 3, people were massacred right. by the military and the police because they protested skyrocketing prices Okay. thanks to that government. Okay, Eric, I'm going to give you a chance to quickly respond to that. I don't want to respond. I just, I mean, it's just fundamentally wrong. And, you know, to have this cavalcade of statistics that are generated out of thin air, it just, you don't need to respond to that. But I mean, I think the They're reality packed. in Venezuela okay. is fundamentally that the health care is unavailable, food is increasingly unavailable, people are actually starving to death in a country that maintains the world's largest proven reserves of oil, and you have crime, street crime, that's out of control by a government that can't control uh, the security of the streets. I mean, this is a, con this is a country that's in full-scale collapse, mm -hmm. and anything to try to say that somehow it's really a paradise, I think is just wrong. Okay, let me go to Luis in Sydney. Luis, uh, there's been a meeting in Mexico. That's the meeting uh, of the Organization for American States. Ministers have been meeting. They tabled a resolution calling for an end to this political crisis in Venezuela. That resolution did not pass. Uh, Nicolas Maduro said that the resolution was interventionism. But given the situation in Venezuela right now, the fact that we have these food shortages, the number of deaths during these protests, don't members of the OAS have a duty to act? Uh, well, they do have a duty to basically support um, the position of the majority um, of the assembly without interfering in internal affairs of um, in, um, member countries. That's a principle not only of uh, international law, but as well is a fundamental principle of the organization. So debate, um, uh, proposals, all that type of um, activity is certainly, I think, very welcome, even by the government of uh, Venezuela, uh, which, as everyone knows, is not uh, certainly happy with uh, the current behavior of uh, at least the members of the assembly and certainly the Secretary General of the Assembly. Um, beyond that, um, if you want um, a level of discussion and proposal for the country, I think the Organization of American States should simply, as many other international actors, any other international actors, uh, support institutional politics within Venezuela. There is already already a calendar for elections. There is not only what you have been mentioning rightly, that there is the, the um, a constituent assembly uh, going on, which is mobilizing people. More than uh, 5,500 um, uh, candidates have been already legalized. 
this is mobilizing people in support uh, of uh, a public debate and um, uh, the finding of solutions for the country. And this will be whatever the outcome of the National Assembly is, will be subjected to the decision of all Venezuelans. That is, um, it's really actually misleading to suggest that this is going to be a mechanism for the government to do whatever it wants, because the result of the Assembly right. will have to be subjected for every citizen to vote. And finally, there is as well, of course, the regional elections in December. Everyone should be supporting that this actually take place and actually normalize electoral behavior in the country. Institutional politics are needed. Intervention is not needed. Right. Jennifer, what is your if view on the if OAS? I could. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. If I could respond to that, mm -hmm. uh, the OAS absolutely has an obligation to respond to violations of its own inter-American democratic charter, which Venezuela and all other members of the hemisphere voluntarily signed in 2001 with the exception of Cuba. Um, and, and there have been violations of that charter for democracy with the annulation of the powers of the, of the National Assembly, the suspension of elections last year, and the right to a recall referendum, and more recently with the trying of civilians in military tribunals. So there have been a number of violations for the OAS to respond to. But the point is for the international institutions, organizations, uh, UNASUR and others that the OAS, that Venezuela is a member of, they're all trying to offer help to the Venezuelans to come out of this conflict as well as the dire economic and social situation. So I do agree okay. with yep. Gloria that, mm -hmm. the, that the commitments to the people, that they, the benefits they've won will be very important for anyone to be able to win elections to commit to. Um, those kinds of, of, of uh, benefits um, and anti-poverty measures that were put in place earlier in Chavez's regime. Right, Jennifer, that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is that this is interference in the domestic affairs of another country. It, it is. Not and when actually, they've well, all... Well, Luis, I'll get you in a moment. I'll get you in a moment, yeah. Luis. Go ahead, Jennifer. Uh, the, this is a charter that obligates all of the governments who have signed it to respect the points of the charter, which includes representative democracy, independent judiciary, freedom of speech and protest, uh, peaceful protest, mm -hmm. and, uh, and elections. So when that's violated, I've... those are considered universal human rights, and the okay. charter says that. Gloria, I will get to you. I just want to get Lewis's point in. Go ahead, Lewis. Yeah, well, uh, firstly, I mean, of course, I mean, what uh, Jennifer is saying, um, certainly may have certain, certain grounding, but the members of the Organization of American States will need a qualified majority to pass a certain type of resolutions. They have not obtained it, and at the moment they don't seem able to obtain it because there is no agreement on those points that um, uh, Jennifer is trying to make. On the other hand, let's just remember that uh, this is a case of potential double standards because the Organization of American States has not acted according to those principles in blatant cases of uh, certainly at least questionable legitimacy of uh, parliamentary behavior. Let's call, um, let, let's recall what some people uh, denominate the parliamentary coups that have taken place in Paraguay in 2000, uh, 2012, uh, most recently in Brazil in 2016, previously in Honduras in 2009 right. with very poor results. The Organization of American States didn't react to those events in a way that uh, should be, according to their principles, have been um, um, materializing. Okay. okay, Gloria, go ahead. I agree totally with Luis. And the only time that the OAS really acted decisively against another state was 1962, when they expelled, under pressure of the United States, Cuba for being socialist. And this is the second circumstance in which the head of the OAS is attempting the same. Uh, it is a political tool and a weapon, actually, the, the Democratic Charter. Um, and we have our own instance uh, in the United States of many, many human rights violations that it never gets discussed there. Mexico, which is one of the big proponents against Venezuela in the OAS, has more than 100,000 people murdered, one of the biggest human rights violations, and nothing is done. So. Um, it's a matter of, uh, I think that the panorama has changed in Latin America. The reason they haven't been able to sanction Venezuela after several attempts by Luis Almagro is that there are governments that represent the people far more, right. like in Ecuador, in Nicaragua, in Bolivia, in, in, in Venezuela, 
but Cuba still refuses to join, and I believe for good reason. They don't accept the, the legitimacy okay. of the OAS yeah. anymore. Right, let me get Eric's view on this. Eric, uh, what do you make of the OAS involvement? Was it a mistake, or could there have been a different approach to this? Uh, no, it certainly wasn't a mistake, and I think, as Jennifer said, there's an obligation there. In fact, mm -hmm. Hugo Chavez himself signed the Democratic Charter. Uh, so, uh, yes, it's true that they haven't been able to get the required number of votes to take uh, votes of member states to take action, but I think that's more a, a signal of the regional government's unwillingness right. to weigh in as opposed to the, uh, whether or not it was a wise thing to do. But I, you know, I, look, Luis Almagro is a Uruguayan former foreign minister. He's fully independent. Uh, he's taken a very courageous stand um, yeah. he, to, to try to highlight the degeneration of democracy in Venezuela and the crisis that currently exists. Without the OAS involvement, uh, it's hard to see a path forward in Venezuela. It really is a path forward that doesn't include continued collapse right. and at some point some sort of a, a social uh, of, of confrontation. Okay, and that's where we have to leave it. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.